and a challenge. And I was laying on the sofa in Palm Springs, and I, I all of a sudden these words came into my head. Howard, your life's work is still your life's work. Your life's work is still your life's work. And I hadn't recognized that. I hadn't recognized that I still had a purpose that was greater than myself. It just wasn't going to be done with inside of an organization. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel like you're in control of your own destiny, none of the rest of it matters. Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced the best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back, breathe in good oxygen, and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Hey, everybody. It's Jason, and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast. Wherever you are and however you're coming to the pod today, thanks for taking time to step back, to align your thinking, set your thermostat, and just breathe. As always, my purpose uh, for these podcasts is to help create a space in your day or your week to think about some ideas, have some dialogue that hopefully will breathe some good oxygen into you. Uh, Before we get uh, started today with today's podcast, Um, Will you please do me the favor and rate this pod five stars, of course, and also leave an authentic review with your words, however you feel, whatever's resonated with you about these episodes. Every time you share your authentic thoughts and also share this pod with people in your network or on your team or throughout your organization, that's how these messages spread. And I appreciate everybody that takes the time to do that. So thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Today's episode is actually part two part two of a pre-recorded conversation uh, from my Thermostat Cultures live event that I host in Columbus, Ohio in November and also have virtual participants from all over. Uh, This past November, though, was a powerful event, and this conversation was just a small part of that inspiring day. But you're going to hear me joined uh, by my good friend and author, researcher, consultant, Tamara Miles. You're going to hear voices from people like my friends Marty Bledsoe Post and Dr. Ariana Howitt from Nationwide Children's Hospitals On Our Sleeves Program for Mental Health. Plus, the very first voice you're going to hear join uh, me is my great friend and mentor and the former president of Starbucks, Howard Bihar, as he shares some valuable and important insights on mental health and being in a leadership role. Uh, Really, really great stuff. So this is part two of that conversation. Again, a small part of a big, uh, powerful day that we had back in November. So now I'll take you into the room for part two of this important conversation. I want to bring in another, I want to maestro another voice into this, because even Tamara, you just referenced a big organization and leaders, you know, uh, wrestling with this themselves, and then how do we model it for other people? Well, we might as well bring in the very first person six years ago when I started this event and had this idea to do this event. The very first person I talked to and said, will you be a part of this was Howard Bihar. So Howard, uh, coming to us from Palm Springs. Howard, if you don't know, Howard was the former president of Starbucks when uh, he was with Starbucks when nobody knew Starbucks and anybody outside of Seattle. They had 15 stores or something. And then Howard and his team led them to over 15,000 stores around the globe. And all of that is wonderful to share about Howard and all his accomplishments and that this guy's a, a guru in so many different ways across the business world. And yet that wouldn't even get to the fact of what kind of person he is. And so he was the first person I called and said, Howard, I got this weirdo idea of doing this event. And by the way, you're going to come be a part of it, uh, right? And he said, uh, you're, yes, I'll be there because that's the kind of person Howard is. Howard, how are you, my friend? I'm great, thank you. Early morning here in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, buddy. Uh, so I, I want you to chime in here because I know you have the, the experience, of course, of, of leading a giant organization and seeing how mental health may play a role in how you create teams and cultures. And, and, but also, I know that you, as a leader, this is a topic that's uh, very near and dear to you. First of all, the issue of acknowledging 
who where you are uh, from a leadership perspective. And you know, I didn't have probably didn't sleep one night in 21 years, right, all the way through because I'm an anxiety guy, and I struggle with anxiety. I didn't realize until after I retired actually how bad it was, but it was there all the time. And but I used to talk about it, you know, with my team about where I was. And you know, somebody was saying oversharing. I'm not so sure you can overshare. I, you know, I mean, I guess there is some point, but. But I always believe that people need to know the issues that you were dealing with personally because it needed to be okay for them, mm-hmm. you know. And um, it's it's part of life. You know, all the things that we're talking about here, they're not just part of work life. They're part of our lives. They're part of our marriages. They're part of our relationship with our kids. And I, I would add, I, I had a few things here. Um, I would add a fourth C. And that's control. There's this mm-hmm. a feeling of lack of control in our lives, and and we're re- and Starbucks really is seeing it, and and the unionization drive that's going on with inside of Starbucks. It isn't that Starbucks didn't have great benefits, probably the best benefits in the country. We had mental health benefits, we had free college. I mean, you name it, Starbucks has had it. But there during the COVID there was this general feel of lack of control. You know, we were one of the few companies that tried to stay open. We couldn't keep all all the stores open, but tried. And uh, there was, I think, a disconnect between leadership and the people in the stores during COVID. The people in the stores were feeling like they couldn't control their own lives. You know, and the people in, in Seattle or the leadership positions didn't understand that. And so everything else broke down. If you don't feel like you're in control of your own destiny, none of the rest of it matters. If you haven't done so already, we hope you'll visit Amazon or Amplify or JasonVBarger.com to check out Breathing Oxygen, my new book that is all about breathing good oxygen into ourselves and mindsets that fuel ourselves and the teams and the organizations around us. Positive, healthy thinking is as essential to great leadership and building a winning culture as the air we breathe. Leading yourself and a team of people has never been more complicated than it is today. As a leader, every move you make is either breathing life into your organization or slowly killing it. The atmosphere can easily turn toxic with negativity, blame, and and doubt poisoning the culture. Just like every being on the planet needs good air to breathe, every organization needs leadership that breathes life into its people to sustain the energy required to complete its mission. Breathing Oxygen focuses on six key leadership mindsets that breathe life into any team. Clarity, inclusivity, mental agility, grit, rest, and ownership. Join us, read, and share Breathing Oxygen. Available now from Amplify Books on Amazon and jasonvbarger.com. So let me, let me ask you that, Howard, because I know you, you and I uh, connect quite often, and I know that there are still to this day, I mean, you mentioned not sleeping for 20, 21 years, but I know that there's still times now that you have strategies and or things that you've had to, to deploy so that you stay in a place of good mental health and that you think about, you know, using the terminology that we've used of, of breathing in good oxygen in order to, what, to make sure that your mind is is right and healthy so that you can be at your best as a husband, as a father, as a friend, and certainly to the the work that you do in the world. But what are some of those strategies that that you've noticed for yourself that have been helpful to you? Well, let me me tell you a short story. So when I retired from Starbucks, I lost my way. And I went into severe depression for two years to where I had a hard time getting up off the couch. And I had lost who I was and what I was about. And yet I, you're looking at a person that had all the resources. I had all the tools available, right? I understood affirmations. I had always gone to counselors when I needed them. 
And here I was in this wall, not seeing my way out, forgetting about all the tools and all the resources that I had available because the depression was so bad. And it took me a while to work through it until one day I was laying on the sofa. And this goes back to uh, uh, contribution, community, and, and challenge. And I was laying on a sofa in Palm Springs, and I, I, all of a sudden these words came into my head. Howard, your life's work is still your life's work. Your life's work is still your life's work. And I hadn't recognized that. I hadn't recognized that I still had a purpose that was greater than myself. It just wasn't going to be done with inside of an organization. Mm -hmm. So I immediately went out and started getting counseling again and started working through it. But I, I found my purpose again. And I came through it, but it didn't relieve me of the depression right away. It still took quite a bit of time. And amazingly enough, you know, I'm 78 years old. You know, I thought by the time I got to this age, it would all be perfect. <laughs> what would I have to be anxious about? What would I have? Why would I ever have a gray day? No reason. I don't, I don't need food. I have housing. I have clothes. I have, you know, I go to the sun when I don't like the rain. You know, but I still have it. I still have it. And I still have to work on it. And I still have to get help. One of the interesting things about Starbucks is from almost, well, for almost 30 years, we've had in-house counseling mm -hmm. for officers, for managers that worked at the support center. A full-time full -time staff of somebody that anybody could go to at any time to deal with issues that they were dealing with. And it delivered a message to people that it was okay to be dealing with issues, these issues. And it was okay to have anxiety. It was okay to be depressed. And you had a place to go if you needed it. And, of course, we covered for the longest time, we covered mental health benefits, you know, at Starbucks. But, you know, it all of this takes work. It takes work. And for leaders, it's that knowing, doing, yeah. We know we have to help our people. But then doing it, spending yeah, yeah. the money, spending the resources to make sure it's getting done. And not saying I care, but don't, you know, not willing to care enough to spend the resources to do it. And th those are the biggest issues because talk is cheap. Yeah, yeah. You either do or you don't. You know, and if mental health is something you're concerned about in your organization, then, then you just can't wish it away. You know, it's not wishes, hopes, and dreams. It's action that counts. And so those are the, you know, and it's the same thing as, for me, it was personal action that counted. To recognize where I was, to take the action, to take the steps to take care of myself and to move through it. It's the same at work. If, you're, if you believe that mental health is important in, you, in your workplace, then you got to spend the resources to take care of it. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, I we've shared this with each other that I, I know for a fact that I'm a better uh, husband, I'm a better father, I'm a better friend, and I'm certainly better at the work that, that I'm lucky and grateful to get to do in the world when I am intentional and strategic about my own health. What is it that I'm breathing good oxygen into myself? And what are the mindsets that I need to be fueling and to be thinking? And what is the toxic stuff that I got to get away from? And I have to be intentional about that or else it falls on me. That I'm, I'm the only one that has control over that of where it is. You know, I talk about where we look is where we go. So what is it that I'm going to choose uh, to look at? Thank you for listening to today's podcast. And I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using, and share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to you and your organization, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we are all ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you, is me, 
is us. B. A thermostat.